Okay, welcome back to part two of how I got my SRV tone in the video I did for the Fuzz Bubble 45 called the Fuzz Bubble 45 Unleashed. Last time we took a look at the Strat itself and the strings that I used. This time we're going to take a look at the Fuzz Bubble and the amp, which was a Vox AC30. I'm going to show you how I set the Fuzz Bubble 45 up and how I set my Vox up to get that sound. Okay, this is how the Fuzz Bubble 45 was set to do the uh, Fuzz Bubble 45 Unleashed video. The tone switch is up full, as you can see. We're not rolling the bass off. The output was set to roughly around between 10 and 11 o'clock, and the ear control was turned all the way up to 77 to give it a really good over-the-top crunch sound that uh, Vaughn used to get. The output control is a matter of taste. With the real cool thing about the Fuzz Bubble 45 is, is that no matter whether you're in the Pete or Jimmy side, it sounds full at lower volumes. So if you're out doing a live gig and uh, you, know, you can't get too loud because the the uh, place you're playing in is small and won't accommodate that. You can basically dial whatever volume, output volume you want, and it will always sound full and thick, and it's also very touch responsive to, um, you know, your playing touch. So that's always, that's a real good feature of the pedal. The Jimmy side, basically the input was up full, the output again was to taste, uh, and the haze control I set basically to like 3 o'clock. And when you back off the haze, if you're up full, you'll really get a full fuzz tone. When you start backing down to 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, it starts to give way to more of a distorted sound. And of course, when you back down like this, you get like more of a distorted crunch, which is similar to the peat side. But we set it for 3 o'clock to do the demo. So it was like that. So it was a nice contrast between two sides going from one to the other. This is great if you want to do crunch rhythm and then you want to get some sort of really good lead tone over the top. You hit the switch and you get right to uh, the Jimmy side and it'll enable you to do that. And the tone switch also was up full. So we weren't rolling the, uh, the low end off either. Okay, here's the top of the Vox AC30. This is uh, one of my favorite amps. I really love this amplifier. Nice full tone. Great reissue from Vox. I used the normal channel, which was this, set it to about almost 10 o'clock. The great thing about this amp, too, is, is that it sounds so good at lower volumes. It sounds nice and full. It doesn't thin out like some amplifiers do. And I set the EQ like that and the cut all the way over to a little past 3 o'clock. Just gave it a nice, well-rounded tone. The tremble is not too up, you know, too far up. Uh, you don't want with Strats have a tendency to sound a little bright anyway, so this gives you a nice round sound. And this along with the Fuzz Bubble 45 is just a great combination. Let's take a look at the speakers too. I'll uh, get down and show you them. Celestian Greenbacks, made for Vox for the amp. I was going to put blue speakers in here, the Blue Dogs, or the Bulldogs rather, the Vox Bulldog, but I didn't do it. These came with the amp. I bought the amp used. The speakers were well broken in and they sounded really great, so I left them alone. And uh, you know, this amp just sounds really good at lower volumes, which when you're playing in small clubs, again, it's important. So between a setup like this, this amplifier here, and the Fuzz Bubble 45, you can get loud and aggressive if you want to, or you can get that aggressive sound at a lower volume, which is great for smaller clubs or smaller recording studio gigs. I know we covered the strings in the last video, but uh, I've been getting a lot of emails from you guys saying that Stevie, they all, everybody thinks Stevie played much heavier strings, 13s to be exact. The truth is, Stevie used a lot of different things and experimented with a lot of different strings throughout his career. But these were the ones that uh, I've been told, and, and through my research, I found that he really used pretty much all the time. Uh, it's the GHS 1300 set. Uh, the E string on the set is 11, and what he would do is Stevie would take the 11, throw it out, and either put a 12 or a 13 in its place. But the rest of the set was not changed. So you had a 12 or a 13 on the E, the B is a 15. The G is a 19, which is unwrapped, and the, um, the D is a 28, the A is a 38, and the low E is the real killer. It's a big 58. That's a, that's a big string, but if you watched him you know, on videos, he used to love to just slide up and down and pop that low E a lot. But this is the set uh, I've been told, and as I, like I said, I researched that I found that he pretty much used. If you're a Strat guy or a Tele guy and you really want to... Try a different set of strings. If you haven't tried these yet, they sound fantastic. They're really great. They're, they're not overly bright. They're very mellow and full. They're very complimentary to a Stratocaster or a Telecaster. I've been playing since I was about 10 or 11 years old, and I'll be 49 in a couple of months. So, And these are the best strings that I've ever used on a Strat or a Tele, bar none. So if you, uh, if you want to try something new, if you haven't tried them yet, I got these at JustStrings.com. Really great website. You can go there. They've got 
these strings and just tons of other strings but you can pick them up there they have fast shipment and I think they even have a write-up on these strings uh, that Stevie used them as well on the site but uh, if you're looking for a, a great set of strings for your Stratiatelli definitely try these pick these up